So one of the first things you might want to do is add this toolbar over here because I use these a lot. This mass properties and measure and also the plane over here. That way you don't have to go up here and look for stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and pull these off of here. So you can see that's called tools. So that's the one you're going to look for. And you're going to look for the one that says reference geometry. So I'm going to delete these. So just put your mouse up here and then right click and go down to customize. Click there. And you should be in the toolbars label. And just go down and check it. Tools. And it'll pop up. And you can click on it there and drag it over here. It kind of flicks around, but you can get it to stick. So if you put that over there, then when I'm doing my tutorials, you can see where I find this stuff faster. Same thing, right click up there, go to customize, and then look for reference geometry. Click on that, click OK, and there you go. That puts that right in there. Those will come in quite helpful when you need to go find the plane or the measure. It's just right there on the side. So that's one helpful tip. Now the next thing is, so we have an item here with a hole in it. It's just a normal cut through. If we look at the sketch, we can see that it's one inch by one inch off from the edges. So no big deal. Let's see, that's 10 inches long there by six inches. So you might not already know how to do this, but I'm actually going to show you something that's assembly. So let's highlight that. And we're going to use this linear pattern. So we're still in a part right now. So we're going to make some holes in this part. So we want pattern direction. Let's just click on this line up there. And we're going to make it one inch. So those holes are one inch apart. There's going to be nine holes counting the one that you're starting with. Here's the same thing. Let's do one inch. And there's going to be five holes counting the one that you're starting with. And they're going the wrong direction, no big deal. Just hit reverse direction there. So, quick way to add a whole bunch of holes to a, a part. Now the reason I did this was to do something in an assembly. So let's start an assembly. And then let's go ahead and insert that part that we just made into the assembly. So we open it, it squiggles around, so we go down here, hold the mouse down there, click, press enter, and it centers it right there on the origin. Now let's insert a rivet. We're just going to put one in. And then we're going to mate it to the part. And, you know, I'm going to put it here. You could put it in any one of these holes, it doesn't matter. Just logically, it seems to make sense. We'll put it here for what we're going to do. So we made it there, and then we we'll made it right down on the top of the plate. So we put that rivet down there, and there you go. Now that would take a long time to put all of these in for all these holes. So what we can do is highlight that rivet, go to this linear component pattern, right up there, linear component pattern. Click on it. And kind of like making the holes, you pick an edge, and you pick a distance, you pick a number that you want to put on there. You can reverse the direction. It kind of gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. So we're going to go with this line for the other way. It doesn't seem one to get on there, so I'm going to get closer. And there, not clicked on. And let's see. Uh, what distance do I want to use here? Let's go three and we'll do two inches apart, I guess. Yeah, two inches, okay. And sometimes it asks for this, all that is doing, if you click on there, you see it kind of just gives you the seed pattern, but if you click off of it, it gives you the whole way, fills it in. So that's a quick way to add rivets to all those areas. Now we could add rivets to every hole if we wanted to. So just by making it one inch, and well, one inch there, and you can see we go out 
I don't even know the number of holes. I'll type 9. Yeah, that looks good. And we'll type 5. And it gives you a preview so you can see what it's going to look like when it's done. And there. So that's one way of adding a bunch of items to an assembly using the pattern. And you can use that in a circular pattern too if you want to. And you don't have to fill all the holes. You can just we could just do four here if we wanted to. And that works for that. All right. And next, this is kind of interesting. You might like this. A lot of times you have to use slots. And it's set up for measuring. We're going to pull this one out from the center. There's several different ways you can measure on these slots. Of course, if you want to get it that way, we can just very easily measure at three inches. Now, if I click on the end here and click on the other end, it wants to give me the center of the hole measurement, which is great sometimes. But honestly, other than if you're machining, there's a lot of times you want to know how long the slot is all the way from one end to the other end. So what you can do is a lot of times I do this and that's fine and in some ways I kind of prefer this because I like having these guidelines and then you can click here and here so that's pretty simple I mean that makes sense and that's the way I always used to do it but there's another way to do this so let's just get out of the sketch and I'll just start it over so when you're um, measuring these slots, of course you can also measure off of the radius if you wish. And that's fine too. But here, if you hold down the shift key and click on the end, so if we start Smart Dimension, hold down the shift key, click on the end, keep holding it, and click down there then it will give you from the end to end. In fact, you might just be able to click on one side, then hold down shift key and click on the other side. I'm not sure how it works, but there you go. There's another way of doing that. That's kind of handy sometimes. Now this one's kind of fun. Obviously, you know how to do materials. And you have all of these down here. These are just your quick materials. And then you have all of these other materials up here. So you can pick a really exotic one, like titanium, or if you want to. And uh, as you know, you can remove the appearance. So it still stays titanium for the weight and stuff, but you can change the color of it. That's no big deal. You already know how to do that. But what I wanted to show you is... We'll take it right back to aluminum. But here's what I wanted to show you. If you go down here, there's usually just a few items you use, like aluminum and steel and a certain pine wood or whatever. And it's kind of handy to have those quick. So this is how you put these in this area. So in order to do that, those aren't able to be highlighted. So you need to go in here and pick the item you want to add. So we're going to go down here and add uh, something weird like stainless steel ferric. Okay, fine. Click Add. And that's way down there in the bottom. That's probably not going to show up. So click on it and then click it up to wherever you want to put it. So we'll put it right above Pine. And then we'll hit Close. And now when we just right click on the material, you can see it's down there in our quick list. So that's just how you add that. But this is the part I thought you might find interesting. So a lot of times I'll do wood items, and it puts this wood grain on there kind of not the way I want it to be. Um, if this was a 2 by 4 or something, I'd want that grain going the other way. No big deal. Go to that area, click on it, click to the mapping, and it gives you all these different options for that wood grain. And see how it's going that way? You can change it 90 degrees or whatever you want and then the grain goes the other way. 
it shows up a lot better on my computer screen, but you can make the grain very small, big grain, or whatever. Now, I don't know if you do any rendering at all, but this makes a huge difference when you're doing rendering, because a lot of times you want to have the wood grain going a certain way, or some of these. So, anyway, that's just one of those things. And if you don't have your version doesn't do rendering, it's a good thing to know this if you ever get on one that does, because you put it at an angle or whatever. So that's kind of an interesting thing there. And I think that's all. Okay.